One of the biggest advantages of standard deviations is it gives us a way to measure a distance a point is from the actual mean. We use these things called a z-score to measure that distance. A z-score is a scale of distance to the mean, where one unit is equal to one standard deviation. The formula we use to calculate this distance from the standard deviation is z equals our value minus the sample mean divided by the sample standard deviation. Or we can use z equals the value minus the population mean divided by the population standard deviation. It's probably more accurate to use population numbers in this case, but we'll be using both in this video. And in future lessons, we'll talk about the difference when we're working with a sample versus a population, depending on the distribution of the population. What's important to note then is z equals 0 means the value is the mean. means it is the mean, because that numerator would be that any number minus itself is 0 divided by the standard deviation, which means if z is negative, less than 0, negative, it means that it is smaller than the mean. And then the implication there is if z is positive or bigger than 0, means the value is bigger than the mean. Also, one nice thing about z-scores is it kind of standardizes all different measurements into a comparable way so that we can compare everybody to the mean and how many standard deviations they are from the mean. For example, we can compare scores earned on different scales. Let's say a student at school x earned an 8.1 grade, and here the average grade is a 7.0 with a standard deviation of 2.0, while another student at school B, actually it's called school Y, earned a 74 grade. And here, the average is 65 with a standard deviation of 15. Who is the better student? Well, what's nice about z-scores, these standardized scores, is we can compare everybody to the mean and how many standard deviations they are from the mean. So at school x, we earned an 8.1 grade. That's going to be the x value that we're interested in. The average mu is 7.0, and the standard deviation sigma is equal to 2. So for this student at school x, 
z is equal to the 8.1 minus 7.0 divided by 2.0. And if I'm putting this in my calculator, I need to make sure that numerator's in parentheses. And when I do, I find out the student here at school X has a z-score of 0.55, a little more than half of a standard deviation above the mean. Let's compare that with the student at school Y who earned a 74. We use that as our x. That's our number that we're interested in. The average score mu is 65, and the standard deviation sigma is 15. So at the second school, using our formula for the z-score, we take the x that we're interested in, subtract the mean, and divide by the standard deviation. And when I do, I find out that the student at school y has a z-score of 0.60. This student is slightly further above the mean, slightly further to the right of the mean, because they have a larger z-score than the student at school x. So the student at school y is actually the better student. The student at school y is further above the mean, or I should say more standard deviations above the mean. Not a lot more, but a little bit more. And is the better student. So these z-scores are really helpful to us to make to standardize different scales so that we can compare them. They also tell us how each point compares to the mean in a measurement of standard deviations away from the mean.